Good afternoon. Welcome to all our new members. My name is Linda and I'm a trauma recovery coach and I love coming into group and encouraging you and helping you in whatever way I can. Today I want to talk to you about insomnia and triggers and how we can go about managing them or beginning to overcome so that we can actually get a good night's sleep. Now, for those who are unaware, and that's probably most of you, <laughs> uh, I actually spent nearly three years in bed from complex PTSD and medical mismanagement. And part of getting well certainly included learning how to sleep again. And when I say that, I say that with every part of my being that I couldn't sleep. Okay, I couldn't get to sleep. And then I went through a time when I could get to sleep, but then 20 minutes later I'd be awake having a panic attack. It actually took me a long time to even understand that when I was waking up 20 minutes later, it was a panic attack. And I'll go into more of the neurology and biology in another video. But for now, I just want us to take a look at the difference between normal sleep management and what we have to do when we've got triggers going off. And we may not necessarily know that they're even, we've been triggered and they're going off. Okay, so we've got to build that, develop, develop that awareness inside of us as well. So if you went to a doctor, a specialist, etc., etc., they're going to give you information for people who don't have trauma and they're going to give you sleep management tools, okay? Some of which will work and some which won't. I've included some of the ones that will work in because there are actions that we need to take in order that we can teach our brain that we're safe to go to sleep, okay? So the predominant thing that keeps us awake is an underlying emotion in our brain that hasn't settled that we're not safe, all right? Now, that can be developed from when we're young. It can develop as we go through adult life and the stress becomes too much and too overwhelming on a sensory level. And I know for me, I didn't even realise I was having a panic attack in bed because I'd had to desensitise myself to feeling those emotions, all right? That didn't come out right at all. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I had already been through a time where I was young and going through the abuse and so I didn't feel my emotions at a gut level. And if you've ever done any research around the brain in the gut, you'll understand what I mean. I've had to work long and hard to get to feel a gut instinct. I had no idea what it was, and it literally is a feeling in your gut. But when you've been through trauma, we, sh we shut all that down because we stop breathing and ready to do our fight, flight, or freeze. Okay, we're ready for action. What do I need to, you know, be safe from? And for me, as an adult, my brain finally collapsed, so to speak, because I felt so unsafe in the situation I was in at the time. So normal sleep hygiene includes the same bedtime routine. Whatever it is that you've got, make it a routine and make it the same time each night as often as possible. Because what you're doing is getting your breathing and your sensory going right. I'm safe. To, every time I do this, I'm safe. And so then if you feel a bit anxious, you can go, no, I'm safe. So you're reaffirming to yourself that you're safe. Wake at the same time. Stick an alarm clock on if you need to, but wake at the same time. Again, it's developing that sense of I'm in control now. I'm the adult and I am safe. No, no electronics an hour before bed. That will depend on you personally. Personally, I find that if I don't do it an hour before bed and I read instead or I journal, 
Uh, I don't watch TV so much unless I'm really tired because then it just sends me to sleep. But pick something other than being on social media and interacting with anyone else. If you're finding it hard to do that, ask yourself the question, am I afraid to be on my own? All right. And feel the response. Very, very important information that you'll need. Limit food and drink beforehand. Well, my part of my same bedtime routine is to have a hot drink when I go to sleep. So to me, that's safe. All right. So see what I mean where we have to pick and choose what's safe. I had a doctor tell me once to not journal in bed, to do everything before I went to bed. And to be honest, it made me so much more unsettled that I had to stop doing it. All right. It, it was just weird. Because I literally have journaled in bed before sleep for decades. So it's a comfort thing for me. So use your wisdom of what you know about you and try what works from normal sleep management and what doesn't. Okay. Now, because it was our senses that got overwhelmed in the beginning and our amygdala hasn't filed them away, what we can do when we go to bed, and damn it, I forgot to bring you one again. <laughs> Uh, what we can do when we go to bed and we can't go to sleep is work with our senses. Essential oils, and these have worked for me in the past, German chamomile and marjoram and lavender, one drop each on the skin under my nose, and I just inhale it and I would go to sleep. It wouldn't work for me now because I'm at a different stage, but it definitely did work. Uh, if you know anyone who does Young Living Oils or doTERRA, they really are pure essential oils and get them to mix you up. Actually, I've got a bottle here. Like, my friend mixed me up a bottle of this for sinus. Like, I suffer incredibly from sinus. And not this time of year when it's spring, I, I suffer in the other six months. And literally, I put this under my nose, my temples, and I can't remember the other, other spot. And within a couple of minutes, I don't, I stop scratching my eyes out, etc., etc. So what you want to do is get them to do up a bottle like this for you for sleep. Okay. And you can use it, put it where they tell you to, and it will help, okay? Because it's that pure sensory, um, it helps reconnect the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. It really does. And if you set your intent, you're going to sleep, do your five seconds in, five seconds out breathing. All of it working together helps, okay? Now, <laughs> the other day I was triggered... <laughs> And I, I was like, I am not giving into this. I'm going to try and do something different and use my senses. So I went in search of something that smelt that would help my brain loop, get off the loop of the trigger. Okay. Now I found some vanilla, vanilla and musk hand cream and I rubbed it in. So I'm using smell and touch. But it did nothing, okay? So I went, that didn't work at all. And then I had this lavender cream, which smells exactly like when I was young with my grandmother and she used to get ready to go out. Like when we went out when we were young, it wasn't a case of, oh, I've got this on, let's go. It was a case of they put on really good clothes because we were going out, right? And it smelled like her when I, I was in New Zealand and got it, right? So I get the cream and I'm going, thinking my name, I'm still triggered. I'm having that panic attack and I'm like, oh man, okay, so that's doing nothing. So I get the VIX, okay? We have the VIX vapor up. It smells stronger. So get the VIX vapor up. I'm sitting there and I'm going, just being very mindful and breathing it in. And I can feel the whole scent go right through me. And it started to stop the trigger. So I took this out and I went, okay, that smell. And then I went and walked on the grass outside. 
I have to laugh because this lady's walking around the backyard smelling Vic's fake burrow and walking on the grass. But here's the thing. When I walked on the grass, uh, it was a bit spiky because we need rain, as always. And as it came up through my feet, I could really feel all the tingling happening. Now, the Vicks actually hooked into my amygdala and reminded me of when I was a kid. Okay, so if we can find that smell that reminds us of something when we're a kid, we're going into our amygdala filing cabinet and it brings up a memory which makes us feel good, which means that our prefrontal cortex is hooked in together. Okay, so then I'm walking on the grass, smelling the Vicks, going, mm, yeah, it reminds me of when I was sick with a kid, you know, rub on your chest and, you know, go to school, Vicks rubbed on your chest. Oh, it just felt really good. And then the grass brought up a memory of when we used to play a game called British Bulldog in the summer, okay, after school with a bunch of kids. But also it reminded me of summer and water play as well. And I could literally, so my sight, my vision came in because I could literally see it all happening in front of me. And the more I did this sensory input stuff, the trigger lessened. Now, another thing to do too is get into group and talk to somebody. This is happening. And talk each other through doing this sort of thing because we want to reconnect the brain. Now, so that helped with the trigger. Uh, massage anything into your body. Or if you've got someone with you, see, I have to do a lot of this on my own because I I'm single. So even though my kids are around, it's different. Um, I did get Josh down to come down. And I said to him, look, I'm okay, but I just need to express what's happening for me because I've been triggered. And that was good. But then I went on to the sensory stuff. Another thing I did at the time, I forgot because I'm not a very big chewing gum person, but I had these packets of chewing gum in my desk. So I started chewing on them. It didn't have a great effect for me, but for others, it's just an idea that might have an effect. Um, I've read Walk on Carpet, but that didn't really do it for me. If you have a different sort of carpet than I do, then it may. But if your tiles are cold, then that might work too, all right? But walking on the grass definitely worked for me. Inspirational music can help because it can help you, help remind you of a good time, which puts you back into the amygdala's filing cabinet, so that can be good too. Uh, I just thought I should play, uh, what's it called? Who were they? Culture Club. Does anyone remember Culture Club? Like Boy George? Went to his concert like decades ago in Sydney and yeah, I don't think I'll ever forget that. That's why I should put that on. But do things like that. And see, the thing is you can write down a list of things that you can use for the next time you're triggered and you can use it for when you've got insomnia to get up and do these things. One of the things that's always recommended for sleep management or sleep health, sleep hygiene, we're getting there, is don't stay in bed. If you're in bed for more than 20 minutes, 30 minutes at the most, and you're not asleep, get up and do something. And I would encourage you to do that because I've done that too. And even though it might mean I'm up a bit longer, I do something that I enjoy and it gets me out of the I can't go to sleep loop, okay? Walk and use mindfulness. So really use your five seconds in, five seconds out breathing and bring yourself into this present moment. I think the sensory aspects of all of this would work with the walking. For me, just walking and being mindful wouldn't get me out of a loop. So in ice on the body or cold shower. So imagine all the sensors that go off if you put ice on you and <laughs> let's face it you jump back six feet and you'd know you're alive and and I imagine I put this on there because I imagine that it'd get you out of the loop as well okay and it's important to let someone know you're triggered and journaling will help you uncover the underlying belief 
that's super important that we head for the belief. And another priority is making sure that we feel, we ask ourselves the question, what am I afraid to feel at the moment? So remember the question that I suggested earlier, asking ourselves, am I afraid to be alone? And once we can identify the fear, it makes it easier to get back to the rational and overcome the loop. Okay. All right. That's all for today. I hope it helps you and blesses you. Remember to make your list out so that you can have it handy because often when we're triggered and on the loop, endless loop, then we forget what we need to do to help us get out of the loop. Oh, I wanted to tell you too, I also have, I have bag, the bags of rice, but on the outside is material that when you run your fingers across it, all right, it's very sensory. So if you can find any sensory tools and you don't even need to go to an autism site and you'll find bucket loads of sensory tools. So even, but you don't have, they can be expensive. Even if you've got a um, cuddle toy, cuddly bear something, then you can run your, when you're lying in bed, you can run your fingers across the fur, all right? And that's very sensory and it's very calming and soothing and you can often feel that calming and soothing and that can be enough to help you get to sleep as well. I've done that and that has been really successful, the touch always the touch. So do something with that and it will help you get out of the loop that's keeping you wide awake. All right. If you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe. If you're watching via Facebook, please feel welcome to like the page or join our group where we do life together and support each other through all the challenges that we go through on our road to recovery. Bye for now.